we run data centers, we actually run four of them. All four of those data centers run on 100% clean energy today. So whereas a lot of people are setting goals for how we want to move our data and the cloud to be clean, Apple's section of the cloud is clean today. That didn't happen by accident, and although I'd love to take credit for it, we were well on our way to doing that before I got to Apple a year and a half ago. Um, and so you start first with the kind of innovation that's required to take a challenge, and certainly that is a challenge, and, and say we're not going to be held to what's been done in the past. We're going to just go ahead and prove that it can be done. That takes innovation. And then you have to say, um, you have to really believe that there's no need to choose between a thriving economy and growth and doing right by the planet and its people. Um, our customers, our employees. When you, when you believe those two things, it moves business to have to innovate. And you know, I think the last time I was here, one of the things we talked about is that as important as government is, it's so much easier to make policy when business has shown a way forward. When somebody has said, hey, you know what, we actually can figure out a way to deal with automobile emissions with this thing called the catalytic converter, all of a sudden, the head of the EPA can then say, well, then let's, let's cut down on the amount of pollution that you can put out, because we know you can do it, because we now know how to do it. So what business can do is innovate and find the hows that allow policymakers and regulators to then you know, set the floor. I think one of the fun things about being on this side of the table is that if you take the requirements as a floor, you know, the, the future is pretty unlimited in terms of what the ceiling could be. Have you thought about using Apple's economic muscle to either directly invest in clean energy or to divest from fossil fuels? So what we've said is, first and foremost, we, you know, Apple has a, um, it's done a pretty good job, I think the best in the industry, of really looking at what our entire life cycle analysis carbon footprint is. And there's a couple of things that we do there that I think lend themselves to real innovation. Um, the first is that we take responsibility for the carbon emissions of our entire supply chain. And of the 33.8 million tons of uh, greenhouse gases emitted in our carbon footprint last year, about 70% of that is not at a facility that has our name on it. It's someone in our supply chain, all the way back to the ore that's in our products, right? So we have tons of work to do if we say this is our responsibility to help move our supply chain along. And in fact, that's what Tim said recently uh, when he was at Climate Week in New York City. He said, watch the supply chain space. That's where we know we can take our leadership and now transfer it along to companies that do work for lots of people, not just Apple. Um, you know, and I think that's important. The other thing we do is we take responsibility for our customers' use of our equipment. So every time you turn on your iPad, and it was an iPad. It was. Um, we are calculating the carbon emissions for that. It depends on where you live and what your energy mix is. And we're trying constantly to find ways to first make sure that uses as little energy as possible, because the cleanest energy is the energy you never use. But then it gives us lots of ways to think about how we might try to start to attack your carbon emissions on your behalf. And that's how you get to a clean data center. When you work in our section of the cloud, you don't have to worry about your carbon footprint. And a lot of companies don't take that responsibility for their customers' use of their products. Uh, but just one last chance on divesting from Apple's cash or uh, using the balance sheet, the financial, to directly invest? Well, you know, the other thing is that we do have a, at least up until now, um, we've had a different philosophy, which is we wanted to make investments in clean energy. And we have lots of investments in clean energy. We own the largest non-utility solar farm in the country right now is the solar farm that we built and now uh, own and made in North Carolina, and we're actually adding to the size of it. It's, you know, it's 110,000 solar panels, enough to power 14,000 homes, and we built it to run our data center. So we've invested in clean energy, but unlike um, others, we've said up until now, we want those investments to be tied to an Apple use, to be for our business purposes. We're 94% renewable in our corporate facilities and data centers. We want to get to 100%. Now as we start to look at other parts of our carbon footprint, including our supply chain, I think it, it does beg the question of where we go next. And so I'm not going to say it's off the table.